in the previous lecture we saw what the tally hamilton theorem is and we also saw that given a function of a i can express it as a polynomial in a with a maximum degree of n minus 1 and then we stop at the fact that we need to solve for these coefficients so that i can find out what f is the question is how do we solve for these coefficients this relationship is so this relationship that you see is also satisfied by the eigen values of a okay so f of lambda j or rather let's start it like this let a belonging to n cross n has m distinct eigen values okay then f of lambda at lambda equal to lambda j is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 lambda till beta n minus 1 to the power lambda n minus 1 at lambda equal to lambda j this is true for all the eigen values now how many unknowns do we have we have n number of unknowns okay so beta 0 beta 1 till beta n minus 1 there are n unknowns what we need is n number of linearly independent uh, equations so when m is equal to n then we get n number of equations to solve for the n unknowns which are beta 0 beta 1 till beta n minus 1 this is what we have so let's say that you have three distinct eigen values of a matrix so you'll get three equations out of this form those three equations and then solve those three equations you will get the values of beta 0 beta 1 and beta Uh, two in this case, if the example is for uh, order three matrix, okay. So once you solve, you get the values of this. So when m equal to n, then we get n number of equations to solve for the n unknowns: beta zero, beta one, till beta n minus one. once the value of beta i is obtained f of a can be solved for the 
by substituting these values in the matrix polynomial which is beta 0 i n plus beta 1 a till I have the summation till beta n minus 1 a power n minus 1. Okay. So now you actually should notice one more thing. Any function of a can be expressed as a linear combination of n vectors if you consider the matrices to be vectors. So function of A is essentially a matrix of the size n cross n. So that is also a vector. Okay. So in the real matrix space, any vector that you want, any vector A that you want can be expressed as a linear combination of these n number of vectors. Okay. Which is i n a k two a three till a n minus one. Any function of a can be expressed as a linear combination of i n. So i n is nothing but a power zero. A is nothing but a power one, and so on. Okay. So I'll state this. Any function of a in Rn that is f of A can be expressed as a linear combination of a power 0, a power 1, a power n minus 1. What if m is less than m? Okay, m can never be greater than m. Okay, you cannot have uh, possibly m number of distinct eigenvalues, and that number is more than the degree of the problem. That is not possible. So either I'll have m equal to n or m to be less than n. So we have seen what we will do for m equal to n. Uh, we'll see what we need to do when m is less than m. Okay. So now whatever we do depends on what is the uh, algebraic multiplicity of the eigenvalue. So here we will consider the algebraic multiplicity of the eigenvalues. Okay. So now what you can do, you can generate the equation as I'll say d power L by d lambda L. So the derivative of the function f of lambda with respect to lambda, be careful about this. We will discuss some examples where I will tell you where things can go wrong. Of f of lambda evaluated at lambda equal to lambda j equated to d l times derivative with respect to lambda of h of lambda, h of lambda is what? That polynomial that we have in here. Evaluated at lambda equal to lambda j, where L varies from 0, 1 and so on till mj minus 1.
Ah, sorry, not MJ. Sorry. NJ minus one. Okay. So now, if you notice, if the algebraic multiplicity of the jth eigenvalue is NJ, we already know that the summation of all the uh, algebraic multiplicity is equal to the summation of nj for j equal to 1 to m is actually m okay so each eigenvalue can be used to generate nj number of uh, equations so essentially you will end up with n number of equations which you can solve for okay and to reiterate i will just say that h of a is essentially this and hence correspondingly h of lambda which uh, i earlier defined as h of lambda so you for just simplicity i'm dropping that subscript here is nothing but beta 0 beta 1 lambda till beta n minus 1 lambda n minus 1 okay essentially this is this is what it is so in general if m is equal to n then essentially l is 0 for everyone if m is less than n then you l varies from 0 to nj minus 1 where nj is something and m is equal to n, nj is equal to n. So, what you have is actually. So, you essentially generate a set of n equations out of the eigenvalues and solve those n equations to solve for the coefficients beta 0 till beta n minus 1. Once you get these coefficients, you substitute it uh, in the polynomial representation of the function of e, and that is what gives you the eigenvalues. We'll see some lectures. Uh, some we'll see some examples in the next lecture. We'll stop here. Thank you.